welcome everyone to I am too tired to get up Wednesday. What we have to go over for today is something I have let go for a few days just to see the initial reactions of this new finding. The new finding in question is a user on Twitter, Pancake, posted this entire video, which is one hour long. It's not that interesting. It's only, it's only interesting at the start. What happens at the start is his offer is his request to buy a boost from a boosting community and then being put in contact with Method, the current World Second Guild, and then he gets into the, the boosting uh, run of Method to get his boost. Now, what is weird about this? What is worrying about this? Let's go back in time to January. Uh, in January was when Blizzard announced that they were getting rid, they wanted to get rid of the boosting communities. So their problem with boosting wasn't boosting themselves. People were starting to get a little bit worried about what about my guild that I boost with? What about my Mythic Plus boosting group? That's not the problem for Blizzard. The problem for Blizzard were the communities. These wide, vast, overreaching and ever-branching systems that touched dozens of different servers and, and were available everywhere. And to be available everywhere, they also were advertising everywhere. So one of the major qualms with this system was the massive amount of spam that was happening in the chat system, which inevitably bled into the looking for group tool. So every other group you saw when you went into the looking for group tool was basically just an advertisement. And then there were also less, less nice things for Blizzard that was pretty much tarnished the reputation of the game. Like for example, boosting communities, advertising and sponsoring guilds or advertising and sponsoring streamers themselves. So for Blizzard, it wasn't, it wasn't good optics to have this boosting community so widely spread, so widely seen, so popular across the whole player base. While they were still fine with boosting, if it was done by a single guild or a single group within the same server, offering their services to players only within their server, that was fine, but the communities, not as much. So initially this was uh, received positively. We had plenty of people being happy that the amount of spam, for example, happening in the looking for group tool and in chat decreased significantly. So there was much less of an annoyance in, in those regards. But, but with this new finding from Pancake, we highlight again the possible issue of boosting because what was shown was that these boosting communities are still active. They are still offering their boosts. They had to go. That's true, they had to go through a period of reassessment. They had to find a different loophole. They had to find a new way to skirt very close to the edge of the rules, try to stay as technically legal as possible. And they found a way, okay? The way they found is, why don't we just become a marketplace? Why don't we just act? Why don't we just pretend? We are basically the Tinder of boosts. All we do, all we do is find people who want to buy something and put them in contact with people who want to sell something. We're not going to do anything by ourselves. We're not handling the money. We're not really dealing with the gold ourselves. We only take our cut for putting you in contact with each other and then we leave. So it's all legal. You have the player from Ravencrest who wanted the boost, goes into the boosting community. The boosting community sees he is from Ravencrest, contacts the guild from Ravencrest, takes the guy to the guild, and then they leave. It's all technically correct and doable. However, this is where we start getting a few more issues with this system, because in the video itself, for example, you can see that there is mules being used to handle the money, to be traded the gold and transferred the gold for these uh, transactions. For example, this mule right here. <laughs> As you can see, this guy is pretty much in every single server, because that's what you do when you want to transfer your money. There is 86 different guys like this. And now the question is, how likely? How likely is it that every single one of these guys is owned by a method player? which was the guild that used the services of the boosting community. How likely it is that all of these are being handled and managed by method themselves, or these guys are all owned by the boosting community users. 
and they are the ones who are mulling the money. They are the ones who are receiving the transactions and they are the ones who are handling all of the logistics around the transaction, which is effectively the same thing that they were doing before, before the boosting community was being banned. So if it's still them doing this, then what exactly has changed with this boosting ban? They have changed their wording, they have changed how they present themselves, but effectively the boosting is still kind of the same. You can see that even Method was quite convinced that what they were doing is perfectly fine because, you know, all of their players were streaming it, right? They were just streaming their boost run because it was perfectly normal. We are Method, we are on our server and we are boosting players from our server. We're not doing anything wrong. You can find you can find plenty of screenshots of um, of infiltrated double agents posting their findings from Huokan, from Sylvanas, from Dawn, or whichever other boosting community they went into. And pretty much they are all on the same wavelength. They are all trying to act like a marketplace that is just very neutral and not really handling the money. Mm, mm, it's not. It, it's it's kind of shady still. However, this shed light on another problem, on another question, which is the money needed, the money required by world first guilds for this type of boosting they need to do after the race, this recouping of their debts. Because as you know, this has been said before by guild members multiple times. For example, you have you have guilds like Echo who went almost 700 million gold in debt. You have guilds like Method who went almost 500 million gold in debt. And then you had guilds like Limit, which even passed the 700 million cost for this world first race. You know, this is money they are simply pumping in the game from the token. You know, they whip out their credit cards and they start buying tokens. This means, for example, staying in Europe, not counting Limit or Liquid, not counting them, just staying with Echo and Method in Europe, the moment the world first race started, 1.5 billion gold was pushed into the economy artificially by these two guilds buying tokens. So, so now all of a sudden Europe found itself with 1.5 billion more gold to deal with. We have read and heard the mindset of similar players, in this case Scribe, from Echo. It's kind of funny he is saying this himself because Echo is doing the exact same thing. Just because they weren't caught red-handed like Method doesn't mean Echo isn't doing it. He points out that this is the fault of the race to world first. This is the fault of the, the prices, the gold money that you need to compete. You guys might have seen the advertisements popping up at the start of the race a couple of months ago with Liquid, Method, Echo and a few others offering services like this one. Hey man, come with us. If by some luck you already have a heroic tier piece, come into our raid. If you loot it for yourself, then we are giving you 2 million gold. Actually, make it 4 million gold. You know what? Up to 10 million gold, etc, etc. And this is what eventually puts them into a lot of debt. And then they have to make it back, obviously. Now, some people are okay with it. Some people are not. One of the main points that is being raised at this explanation Oh well, we have to we have to spend this much money because of the race to world first. Because if you want to compete, that's what we have to spend. One of the points is that this is a community driven race. You're not forced by Blizzard. There is no in-game mechanic that has you do this. This is something you decide to do by yourself. All of the setups of the race to world first, the broadcast, the community streams and whatnot, they are all player driven. Blizzard has nothing to do with any of that. So they decide they want to do this, they decide they want to push themselves to spend this much, and then the blame is on Blizzard for requiring so much gold for this activity. I understand, I understand the mindset, okay? If you want to push to be the best, and the mechanic in the game says that with personal loot, if someone already looted a tier set, then why don't we just get them into our group and pay them to trade it to us, right? So I understand that if that is possible, then why not? Why shouldn't we do it ourselves? But at the same time, it is hypocritical to just try to blame Blizzard for it, because it is something you created, you generated yourself. These three guilds could have shook hands and said, you know what? 
we're not gonna buy BOEs this year, so we're not gonna buy 200 million gold worth of BOEs for our race. You know what? We're not gonna get any people into trading groups to, to try to min-max our tier sets as much as possible, but they did. So now they are dozens of thousands of dollars in debt as a result. But the thing is, if you decide to go through with it because you want to compete, then you don't have the right to complain after. A lot of people pointed their fingers at different things. Many people seem to believe that the biggest evil of this entire thing is the token. Because the only way, the only way these guilds can simply dump five, six, seven hundred million gold in the game is because they spend money, real money, to buy the token. These guilds don't make enough money otherwise, even when they boost, you know. After all, mythic boosting can only bring you so far. It's, it's a weekly lockout. Heroic pays even less. You can't make up 700 million gold unless you would force the entirety of your raid roster to constantly boost heroic runs for like five months in a row. So it's much simpler to just spend real money to buy the tokens. So let's just get rid of the token. If the token is no longer there, then these guilds cannot afford this much money to buy all of these things, to offer all of these things to other players to gain an advantage. The problem then starts bleeding into the rest of the player base, because there are plenty of players who enjoy, like myself, not paying for the game by using a token instead for the monthly subscription. So the amount of players who compete for the world first are roughly 100. So the logic behind getting rid of the token to get rid of the possibility of boosts just for 100 people, no, it doesn't work like that. It's not, it's not really worth. To, to do something like this. And then you have the two more drastic options. Okay, if boosting is the problem, you have to go two ways. Either Blizzard legalizes it, but makes it official and extremely strict. So you make a boosting channel, you make a boosting looking for group section, and then you have to follow the rules to the letter. You have to stay within the same server. Boosting communities are not allowed. You can only find your boosting through that system. And if you break it, you get permabanned. You, your friends, your family, and all of your future generations get banned. Or you go the opposite side. <laughs> you completely ban it. So you don't let people and communities skirt around the edges, whether it's legal or not, whether it's technically correct or not, you just ban them. There is none of this marketplace pseudo boosting community thing they are doing right now. You go down heavy with the ban hammer and you get rid of them. Those are the other two possibilities if you want to be more drastic. Either way, a solution still needs to be found. I still think Blizzard is mostly, mostly okay at this point because they got rid of what they wanted, which was boosting communities being in the spotlight, boosting communities having a lot of attention, a lot of relevance. So now with uh, the spam being mostly out of the chat system, the spam being mostly out of the looking for group system and no, no more things like advertisement of teams, groups, guilds or streams of these boosting communities. The attention brought to these boosters has gone much further down, so Blizzard is probably pretty satisfied with that. So the only other crux at this point of this boosting issue is what to do. What to do with this boosting communities still being very on the edge of being legal, of being legally correct in what they are doing, and also what to do with these world first guilds lamenting the fact that they are forced, you know, it's out of their hands whether or not they, they have or, or not have to boost because they have to spend so much gold for the world first race that they really have to uh, start needing every way possible to then earn this gold back, and boosting is the only solution. So this was the the question, the conundrum of the day, the boosting issue at uh, this moment that has been plaguing the game. Uh, that's perhaps a little bit exaggerated. It's not really plaguing the game. I haven't really been too bothered by boosting at myself, but as I said, many of these issues are touching the the 1% of the 1% of the top players. So it's likely that many people won't see this as too much of an issue, even if you were told, you know what, boosting communities are still a thing, people are still getting boosted with these communities. I think many people's answer will be, well, I don't really care. I'm, I'm not getting my chat spammed, I'm not getting my looking for group tools spammed that much, so whatever. If they're still boosting, 
props on them for being so subtle and sneaky that I haven't noticed, because that's what I was uh, frustrated by before, <laughs> getting their boosts in my face. Now that they aren't, I don't really care what they do. I think this is going to be a feeling that quite a few people are going to have after looking at the initial reactions. So let me guys know, uh, what's your take on this boosting debate that has been going on in the last few days? For now, I'm going to leave you to the rest of your reset, however. Have a, have a good Wednesday and a rest of this week. I don't know what we will see tomorrow, since everything in this establishment is always made up at the last second, so who knows what we will see tomorrow. But for now, it's time to stop. I also have to go and uh, water my throat because uh, it's getting critical. So thank you guys again for watching the video. If you want to continue to support this channel, myself, my family, cats, dogs and children, you can leave a like and comment down below as is the rule of YouTube. And then further down the line, you might also want to subscribe to the channel as well. But for today, of course, given the topic of discussion of this video, only people who have never taken a boost can subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys again. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, I got, I got a better light. As I said, this light is much more manageable and much much more easy on the eyes it also has different lighting colors so props to the manufacturer